Aloha mai kako, and welcome to another episode of Roots Hawaii. I'm your host, Walter Kawai'aia. And joining me today is my very special guest and dear friend, Mildred Hong Wong. Aloha, Mildred. Aloha. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know even as a senior citizens, uh, they tell me that they, they're busier when they're senior citizens than when they're working. Is that absolutely, true? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what kinds of things do you find yourself doing? Well, I have been doing things for the community as far as having fashion shows, putting oh, really? on the entertainment part of it, doing oh. church activities and doing genealogy work. Genealogy work. Doing temple work, and all <laughs> kinds of things. All kinds of things. Always busy. Well, that's why you're planning here weddings. <laughs> <laughs> planning weddings. Okay, so if if I have someone that wants to get married, I just come and see you. You're <laughs> an official wedding planner. <laughs> well, you know, Margaret. Um, Mildred. Oh, I'm sorry, Mildred um, is the youngest of 16 original Fong family children. And uh, now this is the Fong Hing and Alina Fong family, uh, a very established Chinese Hawaiian family, deep rooted in Hawaii, and a very successful family in business and entrepreneur efforts. And so I'd like to make our show all about um, the work. You know, you talked about uh, genealogy work, and we have on the table here displayed several books that you've put together for your family and the book that we want to particularly refer to and I'm going to ask our engineer if he can there's a nice shot and so this book right here that I'm holding is entitled Elizabeth Alina Se Fong and can you tell us who that is well Elizabeth Fong is my mother that is your mom right and I was fortunate to have lived with her all of my life from the day I was born till the day she passed on and from living with her, I was able to gather all the information I've had to put into these books about her life. So can, can I ask you a question? Um, so there were originally, there were 16 children, and I think your, your oldest brother, is that right, um, passed away. Um, and so that when he was young, from baby, I guess. Oh, yes, yes. My first, the first brother that first I one. had, no one really knew him in the family because he was the first. And so your mom literally raised these 15 children. <laughs> and uh, well, your dad must have been a hard worker <laughs> to take care of mom. And, and of, in, the one, in the two to 15, which child were you, if you don't mind my asking? I'm the second to the youngest. You're the second to the youngest. Mm -hmm. um, that must have been a really special opportunity, especially you know, at that time in your mom's life. She's had, she had years of experience raising children. And so, you know, there you were to be able to participate with her, and she had all of this experience. You know, how did your mom, did she have a favorite amongst the children? Oh, we were all her favorite. And this is one of the outstanding uh, traits that she had. She never took, treated mm -hmm. anyone any differently, and we all felt that we were her favorite. She loved it. Every one mm -hmm. of you, all 15 of you. That's unusual. That, well, I'm not only unusual, but that's, you know, having raised three children myself, that can be a challenge, uh -huh. you know. I mean, it's, it's the, there's a natural human tendency uh -huh. to, you know, perhaps favor one over mm -hmm. the other, and it can be for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to learn that your mom favored no one, loved all 15 mm -hmm. of those children, including yourself, equally that must have maybe that you know i've known people long before i met you and your family uh you know through associations in the music business particularly with kahawano lake and anti mikey mm -hmm. iu lake the kumahula they referred they talked about grandma fong that's how they referred especially anti mikey mm -hmm. grandma fong grandma fong and i thought who is then when i finally met your family i met you then i i put the pieces together so what was it about, because I know Auntie Mikey very well, what, what drew Auntie Mikey to your mom? What was their connection? I think they had a kind of a spiritual connection. They both loved to help people, and they both loved people. So, so when that you're, was the connection. When it's yeah. that kind of connection, you, you bond very easily with people wow. of like values. 
Yes, yes. Mikey Ayu was a wonderful person. She was. And so knowing, you know, having known Mikey, I, I, I never had the fortune of knowing your mom, Grandma Fong, um, but heard a lot about her. I'm going to ask our, uh, Rob, our engineer, to uh, if he could post up uh, the first of eight photographs. There we go. So, Margaret, I mean, Mildred, excuse me. <laughs> I keep saying Margaret. Mildred, can you tell us who these people are? Well, in the picture at the right is my grandfather, uh, my maternal grandfather. And on the left is my maternal grandmother. Oh. And at the bottom is my mother. Oh, that's your mother's And that's when she was about six years old. Okay. Right. So cute. Um, so your, grandma, your maternal grandmother, she was pure Hawaiian? Yes. She was a pure Hawaiian lady, tall, strong. And I was kind of afraid of her because she was very quiet, but said very stoically, you know. So I was. I'm going to imagine she spoke Hawaiian. Oh, absolutely. Yep. And the phrase I remember a lot is "kuli kuli." <laughs> kuli kuli. <laughs> you know, kids running around. Yeah. Kuli kuli. Yes. Well, we didn't have that many children. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. But she was a nice grandma. She didn't say very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe we can have Rob put up our next picture. Uh, we want to um, be sure that the audience knows that these pictures come from this book. Yes. Here. So all of these pictures uh, that our viewers are, are seeing today on today's show all come from these books that were put together by this wonderful woman, uh, Mildred, Mildred Fong Wong. And so this book, uh, many of these pictures, and for this one, for example, this is Fong Hing. Yes, this is my father when he was younger and when he was older as a businessman. I need to very quickly tell you about him. He came from China at the age of 19 and started working in a, a, a family home for one of the big businessmen here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came over as a laborer, really. But he wasn't put out in the fields because I guess he could read Oh. Chinese, and he could do that. So they allowed him to be a, a house manager in one of the big boss's homes wow. up on Mott Smith somewhere. My okay. mom, I remember my mom telling me that. So he worked there for two years, and when he completed his contract, they were allowed to either return to China or stay in Hawaii and do their own thing. So my father decided to stay in Hawaii, and open a laundry and open a chop suey house and became a bondsman and went into real estate and oh did goodness. all that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I give him a lot of credit for doing that because, you know, he didn't have very much but, to start with. But he went on and, and eventually met my mother and married her and raised a family of 16. Wow. I'm going to ask Rob to throw up the next picture because... Uh, there, and we want to keep that there for a bit. So that picture, uh, that was one of the businesses, his laundry business. And can you pronounce the name? You'll pronounce it better than I could. <laughs> it says Wo Hop Outfit, I think. Yes. Can I see that? Uh, yeah, that was his store on New Uwano Avenue and Bethel Street, I think it oh. was, somewhere around there. And I don't quite remember that store because I wasn't born at that time, I don't think. That, that's a picture of, of your mom? Yeah, that's my mom when my dad met her. He was 16, and he was about 35. And he <laughs> decided he wanted to marry this Hawaiian woman okay. because she seemed like she was very mature for her age. And so they got married. And I see you have, it says right there, this is the first family portrait. And... You shared with me a cute story about this. So, which you're the little one sitting right? Oh yes. Yes, I, I remember when I you first showed me this picture. <laughs> I said to I said to Milcha, I says, how come you didn't smile? <laughs> and she shared this cute story. So, oh. if you don't mind sharing it with our viewers, because I looked at that, yes. you weren't smiling. It was a great thing to take pictures in those days. You know, you have sure. a photographer there, and and my mom cut my hair just before we were supposed to sit for the picture. And I was so upset and angry that I could never find myself. I could never make myself smile. smiling. Oh, and, and every time I see that picture, I tell people, just remember to smile because it'll go with you through life. <laughs> That's funny. That's really cute. And all 
All 15 of you are in that portrait. Yes, 15 of us. You know, I mean, when you, it's so precious to have these kinds of portraits, you mm -hmm. know, for, I mean, because when you think of it, this portrait was taken in what year? Uh, 1936. Oh, about 19, yeah, yeah, yeah 36. 1936. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine for all of the, you know, you know your mo'opuna, you know, and all of the, the, the little ones now, mm -hmm. if this wasn't available, it would be so much more challenging mm -hmm. for the family, you know, to kind of give them an insight as to not only their family, what they appeared like back in 1936, mm -hmm. but when you look at those pictures, you see what Hawaii looked like. At least, you know, you look at dad's uh, business, his laundry business, we all know what Nuwano and Bethel looks like today, and you look at that and like, wow, it's not even close to what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a, it's a step back into the past. And I always, uh, when, I go, when I've done my own genealogy and I rummage through family pictures like that, I, I just sit there and I would stare at them and try to recount perhaps what it was like back in that day. Mm -hmm. um, our next portrait. Huh. Okay, we have several pictures going on here. So uh, different, uh, I guess, different years that I see. Tell us about that home. It says the Vic Victoria Street home. Okay, we were raised in a home on Kinao Street. And the war broke out. December 7th came on. And immediately all these huge mansions went on sale because the businessmen mm. who, knew, who, had, who owned these homes immediately packed up and flew to the mainland because they thought the Japanese were going to come over and oh, take over Hawaii. But oh, my man. father then needed a home for the 16 children, <laughs> 15 children that were growing up. And so he, we went house hunting. I remember going house hunting with him. And we came, went to several homes, but this one turned out to be the best that fitted our, oh. our family because um, this house was owned by... Um, Stanley Kennedy family of oh, Hawaiian yes, Airlines. Airlines. Yes. Uh huh. And he packed his things up. I remember when I first went into the house, there were sheets all over the furniture. All his personal belongings were gone. The house was empty. The garden was really beautiful because they had gardeners there to take care of things. And the trees, we had 11 mango trees there. But when I first <laughs> went into the house, I just felt like like a little princess because <laughs> the, the garden was so beautiful. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, this is the front of the home, and I imagine the back must have been just as beautiful. Yes, it was on an, about an acre of land. Wow. And so we had this huge garden on the side, which I would just run all over and see the beautiful hydrangeas. Did you know that hydrangeas grew in stalks? I didn't. Yeah, they grew in tall stalks, and at the end of the stalk, I would see these hydrangeas. Wow. At least I think they were hydrangeas, <laughs> but they were beautiful pink flowers all over the garden. Wow, what wonderful memories. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess there's something to be said uh, from growing up in a large family with a lot of brothers and sisters. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't pretty much have to go to too many places to have fun and activities <laughs> and find things to do, as opposed mm -hmm. to growing up in a house of just yourself as a mm -hmm. child, or maybe having one sibling and not getting along with that one sibling, it could be very lonely. Um, so I see we have different portraits here. So the first one on the top, uh, our right, uh, 1942 family portrait. At, all of these were at the Victoria home. Right. Then we have one on the bottom left, which was taken in 1952. Mm -hmm. And then on the bottom right, uh, taken in 1955. I guess. Like you said earlier, it was a big deal to have a professional photographer come in. And, and <laughs> in gather. those days. In yes. those days, yeah. Uh -huh. It's so different now with technology. Right. <laughs> um, we miss out on these kind of opportunities, uh, <laughs> perhaps, because, because of the effort that had to be put forth to mm -hmm. gather you know, professional photographers coming in. It, it was a big deal. It was. You know, today with our, our smart devices, it's not that big of a deal. Yes. And so not that much attention. You know, hopefully we don't lose this. Well, we could go on. We, we're going to take a short uh, break uh, from our talking star with our special guest, uh, Mildred Wong Fong, about her family 
history here in Hawaii and the, and the Fong family. Uh, I'm your host, Walter Kavai of For Roots Hawaii. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you. and. Uh, Aloha. Jelena Maikako, uh, welcome back to Roots Hawaii. I'm your host, Walter Kavaiaia, and we're here having a great time talking story about family history and family genealogy with Mildred Fong Wong. So we, we left off on that last portrait that showed that, that wonderful Victoria home. And before we... I asked uh, Rob to put up our, our, our fifth uh, picture there. I want to take a look at these precious uh, books and talk a little bit with, uh, with Mildred about them. So these books that we're looking at, all you, you were the one that took the time to gather, and, I mean, to go and find the pictures and, and stories and put it all together. Uh, I was fortunate to have inherited this big box <laughs> of documents, baptismal certificates, birth certificates, death certificates for my parents, my father, my mother, my sister who passed at a very young age and left no family, and I felt she should be remembered, and even of my husband. So I had all these pictures in this box. And as I'm getting older, I'm wondering what's going to happen to it. Sure. I took it from... Canal Street to Victoria Street to Diamond Head Street home, and then now to my home in Manoa. And I'm beginning to think, what am I going to do with this? And I don't want it all to be thrown away. So I decided to put them into books. And what I did was just set the pictures down that I got and all everything, put them in chronological order. And the stories that came to my mind with the pictures is what I wrote in these books. You'll notice that there are words in here yes. that go with the pictures. And, and every picture is documented. Something is said about the picture so that my descendants, right. 15 generations from now, will know about what yes. these pictures are. But uh, Well, I, I, I want to, on behalf of your family, I want to thank you for, for doing that. It's a courageous uh, work. But to, my, to the viewers out there, this is something, you know, we live in a, in, a, in a world now that more and more people are trying to discover their ancestors, and when they do discover, they begin to gather. And when we say gather, they're gathering just what Mildred talked about, gathering pictures, gathering documents, and then taking the next step of connecting everything, piecing everything together. And you might ask yourself, for what purpose? Well, she just identified the purpose. And that's for generations to come, long after we're all gone, you know that you've, you've put an effort, you've made a sincere effort to preserve your own family history. And I think, if I can speak on your behalf, and you can please chime in, that this is what uh, you know, Mildred wants to share with, with the viewers out there, that this is really important, that all of us in our own families, we all have stories to tell about mm -hmm. our growing up, where we grew up. It's not about the money we had or we didn't have. It's about the experiences of discovering each other and all of our family members. And so thank you so much for all of your work. I'm sure your family must have appreciated all of this effort. Yes, we, um, when I did these books, we printed over 50 copies. And wow. each of my brothers and sisters 
each one has a book. And some of them got books for their children. But I hope to put it online somewhere so the generations that come later can still get sure, these sure. books. Sure, sure. As we were driving to the studio uh, this morning, uh, Mildred asked about that. And so we shared with her that we're more than happy to help her. There is the technology today and the ability for us to, as she said, to take these original records that these books uh, were founded on and to preserve them forever. Because original records, original pictures are not going to last mm -hmm. uh, the test of time. So one way that we can preserve them is by scanning and digitizing them, and even for families' uh, uh, personal uh, use. Okay, uh, if I could ask uh, Rob to hoist up. Uh, there we go. All right, so we, we alluded in our introduction about the success that this family has had. I mean, you would imagine that with 15 children, at least somebody's going to find success in business. <laughs> but in this case, almost every one of you found uh, success. And so I want to talk a little bit about what we're looking at here, Margaret. So I see on the top, I see on the truck, it has the word Acme. I barely remember Acme as some kind of like mattress company. Right. <clears throat> yes, my father started with Acme Mattress Company. And it grew into becoming Sealy Mattress Company, in which the family took over and ran the company. The franchise. Uh huh. Wow. And so, um, with that, you know, it it helped our family to survive. <laughs> I remember Sealy Mattress. I mean, I don't know of my generation who does not remember Sealy Mattress. So I'm going to ask a question of our audience, and I want I'm going to wait for the response. Can anybody remember where that Sealy Mattress picture? <laughs> where it was geographically located on the island of Oahu. Anybody? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> yes, correct. Thank you, Auntie Colleen. Airport, right? right? Lagoon Drive, mm -hmm. am I correct? You're yes. right. Very good, <clears throat> Auntie Colleen. Lagoon Drive. Good job. All right. So uh, I'll ask uh, Rob if he could put up our, our next portrait there, our picture. Okay. So we talked about the, the first home being on Kinao, and then the war breaks out, and a lot of these uh, businessmen decide to pack up and move in fear of what may occur in Hawaii. And you folks bought this, your dad, mom well, and dad bought this. Before we went to Diamond Head, <clears throat> we had to um, raise that big home. Mm -hmm. And we built two large condominiums that oh, exist there today. Victoria Mansions and Victoria Plaza. Okay. So the home is no longer in existence. So we developed those two and uh, are enjoying our home now after that. We moved, oh, when we knocked the house down on what, Victoria what you, Street. What year was that? Do you remember? That was in 1968. Oh, the year I graduated from high school. <laughs> we knocked the house down, and then we went to live in the first condominium we built. My mom and oh, I okay. went to the top of the uh, penthouse of Victoria Mansions. And then after that, we moved to Diamond Head. Diamond Head. She got oh, tired of staying way up high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she wanted a better view on it, Diamond Head. Huh? Well, yes. she wanted something on the level Closer floor the... so that my children could enjoy and not be afraid of them falling off of the top of the building. So as, a, as your mom, so your mom moved, your, I, I'm assuming that your dad was, had already passed? Oh yes, he passed in 1954. And so mom moves out and you, uh, to the Diamond Head home, and I understand that that became like the gathering place. Oh. But not just the, your family, uh, an extended family, but even for non Family members who just loved your family would gather. That became like the gathering place. But before that, the big Victoria Street house was the biggest <laughs> gathering place because it was a larger home. Mm -hmm. And I recall having even the armed forces servicemen entertaining them there. Really? The house was very open. My mom always had this Hawaiian komomai feeling. Komomai, I... And come in. Anyone mm -hmm. can come in. Of course, today it's kind of scary to do that. But, Different times. But yeah. in, in those days, it was, come on in, eat what we have. And <laughs> I find myself doing the same thing. Whenever people come over, I say, did you have something to eat? Would you like some? <laughs> and then I have to catch myself. <laughs> well, I grew up in the same fashion. And, you know, it's wonderful for your own children to have grown mm -hmm. up in that environment because they'll probably carry 
they're those doing same, that too today. They do today. the same thing, mm -hmm. and their children likewise. Well, uh, we get photo number seven there, Rob. Okay, so another picture of uh, oh, that that's... beautiful home. Wow, this I love this picture because it, you really get to see unobstructed that front portion of the home, absolutely beautiful. That's how it looked when we moved in, those beautiful royal palms. Wow, absolutely today, beautiful. Today at the mansions, the condominiums, mm -hmm. you'll see just about two or three there. Wow. I mean, how old were you when it, so 1968? I was 11. So you were 11 years old. I mean, were there any sad feelings about, you know, I mean, knowing the memories and everything that went on in that house for, for so many years, for all of you, it, it, there must have been a part of your hearts that were sad to mm -hmm. see the structure come down. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Okay, we get our last photo there. It's, I wanted this to save this for last because, you know, this is, this is the matriarch of, of the family. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, this is Grandma Fong, as we, uh, you know, lovingly refer to in her wedding dress, I assume. This is uh -huh. on her wedding day. Um, that was you know, 1910. 1910. And how, how old was Grandma? She was 16. She was 16. And how old was she when she passed? 93. 93. Uh -huh. I mean, she, she lived a full uh, and prosperous life, raising all of you. And I'm sure she's looking down from heaven mm -hmm. and seeing all of you and all of her posterity and mm -hmm. just being overjoyed with, with all of that. That's, you know, when we talk about roots, that's the roots we talk about. We all have roots to connect with. Um, and so I want to take this opportunity as our time is, has gone by. Uh, Miltra, thank you so much. Can um, I just say to the audience, the please. viewers, please talk to your family today. If your parents are alive, get all the information you can from them. So you won't regret later, oh, I could have asked her this and that. And spend time talking to them because there will be a time when they won't be there. And with all that information, take your pictures and line them up in chronological order. And with your mind, stories in your mind and the pictures, you'll be able to do these books very easily. Okay. You heard it from someone that has done it herself. Uh, I want to thank Mildred uh, uh, Fong Wong for being here and taking time. And not just for being here today, but for the years uh, of sharing with us about her family and their success. Uh, we, could, we could go on and on today. Thank you for joining me here at Roots, Roots Hawaii. My name is Walter Kabai Aya. And until we meet again, everyone, take care and aloha no.